<laughs> right. Like I said earlier, I think when I first saw you, let's see, let me let me share one of my. Oh, I don't have it open. I got to open it while we're talking. Um, so let me ask you how to, if you could, while I'm finding my photo that I downloaded, uh, talk about the difference of companies and stuff in the industry. Because there's so many, you know, accusations and different things that are said and done about how these companies uh, pay people, how they treat people and those kinds of things. Just a general thing. And I don't, you know, I'm not here to throw, ask you to throw mud or anything like that. Just a general idea of like, you know, what it was like and what some of your experiences were kind of like working for different companies. Because the cultures definitely sound completely different in different ways. Well, um, when I started out, there was Gold Key, Charlton, DC, and Marvel. But basically, that's where you could work for it. Uh, and my first jobs were for Gold Key, who was Dell Comics, and it was doing uh, mystery stories here and there. And I just, you know, got my foot in the door. Um, the other thing I was doing, strangely enough, at the time was, was the independent stuff, where the um, you know, what they call underground comics, um, which you didn't make much money, but at least you got to learn a little bit about the the um, you know the reproduction process of of doing a drawing on a board and seeing what it looks like when it actually goes to print. Um, but the companies themselves, I think the hardest thing that we had to get through as, as young artists was, um, like I said, the artists were all family. The companies were not our families. And for so many of us, um, we didn't understand that. I mean, you know, you thought, I'm working for Marvel. They're all right. You know, they're always going to take care of me. And the reality was when we came into Marvel, the first thing we're doing was getting rid of a whole lot of older guys that, you know, well, you don't really quite fit the way we're doing things now. Um, and that was kind of, that was a standard process in comics. I mean, it was, it was, um, um, it was very much a mom and pop organization. I think, I mean, Marvel was just a small company. And um, um, while I wasn't, I can't say I was a big Stan Lee fan, uh, he was an expert at creating hype and creating an interest in the material uh, at a time when comics themselves were just, you know, they were hanging on by a thread. When TV came in in the 50s, that was pretty much, you know, like the writing was on the wall for the comic book industry. Um, how are you going to get kids interested in reading a comic book when they can watch something on TV that talks and moves? Um, video games in the 80s and 90s took that even further. Um, I mean, I, I'm, always in, I'm always amused when I run into people who tell me about, like, you know, comics. So that's a big business. And I'm going, uh, as far as I know, the comics died in the 80s or 90s. And there's still a lot of people making a great living off the corpse. But... Um, you know, the books themselves, I don't think there's any new creative uh, material going in. Um, no one I know makes a living drawing comics. Uh, you can make a living off the ancillary stuff of comics. Right. But, I mean, it, it's like uh, anything Marvel or DC has done for the past 10, 15 years, it's basically paid advertising for all the movies that they've put out. Yeah. Um, right. So, I mean... Um, guys your age are kind of, they're, they're the audience, uh, I mean, for a lot of the comic book work and every year they're getting, that audience is getting a little bit smaller and smaller. Sure. Um, one of the oddities that I find now that I find just fascinating is that when I was a kid, I was talking about my friend Fred Jackson and myself, and I swear we were the only two guys in Pontiac that were drawing our own comic books. Um, you know, nobody did that kind of stuff. And now I run into kids and everybody's doing their own little comics. Um, and pretty much the same way I did them when I was a kid. I mean, just getting a sheet of typewriter paper and, and, you know, either, you know, uh, uh, splitting it in half or drawing on it and, and, and drawing your little stories on there and then stapling it together. Um, and I find that, um, Comics is, I don't know what you call them, a genre, an art form, or whatever, um, are, are really fascinating because they're the easiest and the cheapest and the most egocentric way 
you can put your creations together. I mean, if you want to work on film or something, you got to have somebody hold the camera. You got to have somebody act. You got to bring all these people together. Comics, you can just grab, you know, your paper and your pencil and, and go into your room and lock the door. And you got your own little world and you can work on that. And I think that constantly appeals to, uh, you know, uh, younger kids. And you can do your own ideas. You don't have to, you know, um, you don't need somebody else to come in and, and give you the stuff to work on. Yeah. <laughs> Rap Circle is finally here. I know everybody been waiting for it, right?